Sutra, Ananda, those who flow through these three superior levels will be replete with great compliance. Their bodies and minds are at peace and they obtain limitless bliss. Although they have not obtained proper samadhi, the joy within the tranquility of their minds is total. This is called the third dhyana. Commentary Ananda, those who flow to these three superior levels will be replete with great compliance. That means they can comply with the minds of living beings. They can make living beings happy. Their bodies and minds are at peace and they obtain limitless bliss. They do not have any false thoughts in their minds and so they do not act out false thoughts with their bodies. They experience no unrest in either body or mind. Those in the first two dhyana heavens got rid of their sufferings and afflictions, their worries and hang-ups. The beings in these heavens have no such experiences. Their bodies and minds are quiet and peaceful. They are also dependable. How are they dependable? They have no thoughts of desire. They don't have to go through trying to find someone of the opposite sex in every thought they have and in every move they make the way ordinary people do. When your body and mind are not at peace, then a new thought arises as soon as the last one ceases. Ah, that person is beautiful. Also, and so is really handsome. All day long, you think about that kind of stuff. But if one's body and mind are at peace, the kind of peace described in this passage, then those kinds of thoughts simply do not arise anymore. It all boils down to this one problem. I keep talking and talking, but in the last analysis, what leads you to create offenses is just this one problem. It's that first thought of ignorance that stirs up so many calamities as a consequence. Emotional love and desire come from that ignorance. So the first thing mentioned in the 12 links of conditioned causation is ignorance. From ignorance comes activity and from activity comes consciousness. Once there is consciousness, there is name and form. It all starts right there. Also, the beings described here have not broken through ignorance, nonetheless. They obtain limitless bliss. Although they have not obtained proper samadhi, the joy within the tranquility of their minds is total. They don't have genuine concentration, but in the peace and quiet of their minds, there is a kind of joy. This is called the third dhyana. When you reach the third dhyana, your thoughts do not arise. You obtain the genuine bliss of still extinction. It is said, when no thought arises, the entire substance appears. When the sixth sense organs suddenly move, one is covered as if by clouds. That moment without any thought arising in the original substance of the Buddha, thus it says that the entire substance appears. Your eyes taking a look and joyous listening is the movement by which you are obscured. Draw in the clouds, you cover yourself nature over. Before the stage now being discussed, one's thoughts were still active. For instance, when one's pulse stopped, one would think, How is it my pulse has stopped? With that one thought, your pulse would begin to pump again. When one's breath stopped, one thought, I'm not breathing. And as soon as one had that thought, thought the breath started up again. That's what happened before the thought stopped. Now in the third dhyana, there isn't any of that. If the pulse stops or the breath ceases, no matter what happens, one pays no attention. Such thoughts do not arise anymore. One has no thoughts at all. They can't be found. That's what's meant by the lines. When no thought arises, the entire substance appears. These lines describe the state of the third dhyana. Sutra, moreover, Ananda, heavenly beings whose bodies and minds are not oppressed 
put an end to the cause of suffering and realize that bliss is not permanent, that sooner or later it will come to an end. Suddenly, they simultaneously renounce both thoughts of suffering and thoughts of bliss. Their cause and heavy thoughts are extinguished, and they give rise to the nature of purity and blessings. They are among those in the heaven of the birth of blessings. Commentary. Moreover, Ananda, heavenly beings whose bodies and minds are not oppressed, put an end to the cause of suffering and realize that this is not permanent, that sooner or later it will come to an end. At this point, suffering, difficulty, worry, and hang-ups no longer oppress these beings physically or mentally. They don't blend the causes of suffering, but they can't count on the bliss being eternal. Eventually, it will go bad. Suddenly, they simultaneously renounce both thoughts of suffering and thoughts of bliss. If they reach the heaven of pervasive purity and become attached to the bliss they are experiencing there, they've made a mistake. They should put both bliss and suffering down, so there is neither a perception of suffering nor a perception of bliss. If they do that, they will have genuine bliss. Their coarse and heavy thoughts are extinguished, and they give rise to the nature of purity and blessings. The pure nature of blessings and virtue arises. This purity of blessings is just the absence of thoughts of suffering and bliss. They have a pure reward of blessings. These beings are among those in the heaven of the birth of blessings. Sutra Those whose renunciation of these thoughts is in perfect fusion gain a purity of superior understanding. Within these unimpeded blessings, they obtain a wonderful compliance that extends to the bounds of the future. They are among those in the blessed love heaven. Commentary Those whose renunciation of these thoughts of suffering and bliss is in perfect fusion gain a purity of superior understanding. When they renounce the two kinds of thoughts mentioned above, the purity of blessings arises. Now they gain a superior understanding of this purity, that is, their wisdom has greatly increased, they gain the purity of wisdom. Within these unimpeded blessings, they obtain a wonderful compliance that extends to the bounds of future of the future. There is nothing that can hinder this reward of blessings. Its magnitude, its magnitude is too great. Out of these blessings arises the ability to constantly accord with living beings. This kind of compliance is such that if channeled to the east, it flows east. If channeled to the west, it flows west, just like a river. There is a total ease in all that one does. Everything one does is correct. One does not make any mistakes. Everything is in accord with the one's intent. Everything one does is totally in accord with the wishes of others. However one goes about doing something, it is appropriate. There are no problems that arise, no matter what one does, no trouble comes from it. All the problems are resolved, that's what's meant by obtaining a wonderful compliance that extends to the bounds of the future. This continues forever to the end of the bounds of the future. What are the bounds of the future? They are just that, the bounds of the future. What else is there to say? These heavenly beings are among those in the blessed love heaven. Sutra Ananda, from that heaven, there are two ways to go. Those who extend the previous thought into limitless pure light and who perfect and clarify their blessings and virtue, cultivate and are certified to one of these dwellings, they are among those in the abundant fruit heaven. Commentary Ananda from that heaven. 
that is from the second heaven of the fourth jhana, the blessed love heaven, there are two ways to go. One way leads to the heaven of abundant results, and the other way leads to the no thought heaven. There's a fog, fog in the road at this point. Those who extend the previous thought, uh, the state of the blessed love heaven, into limitless pure light, and who perfect and clarify their blessings and virtue, cultivate and are satisfied to one of these dwellings. That is, they are among those in the abundant fruit heaven. Their virtuous nature is abundant and vast, and their fruition is large, so they can dwell in this heaven. Sutra, those who extend the previous thought into a dislike of both suffering and bliss, so that the intensity of their thought to renounce them continues without cease, will end up by totally renouncing the way their bodies and minds will become extinct, their thoughts will become like dead ashes. For 500 ends, these beings will perpetuate the cause for production and extinction. Being unable to discover the nature which is neither produced nor extinguished, during the first half of these ends, they will undergo extinction. During the second half, they will experience production. They are among those in the heaven of no thought. Commentary Those who stand the previous thought into a dislike of both suffering and bliss. So, the intensity of their thought to renounce them continues without cease, will land up totally renouncing the way. If heavenly beings in the blessed love heaven previously described develop a distaste for both suffering and bliss, they will do all way with them both. Their investigation of the extinction of these two suffering and bliss continues on and on until they end up by totally renouncing the way. Their bodies and minds will become extinct, their thoughts will become like dead ashes. At this point, they are cultivating the samadhi of no thought. For 500 ends, these beings will perpetuate the cause for production and extinction. Being unable to discover the nature which is neither produced nor extinguished, they have a lifespan of 500 ends, but the cause they are creating is based on production and extinction. During the first half of these ends, they will undergo extinction. This refers to their renunciation of both suffering and bliss. When they realize the perfection of that renunciation, such thoughts do not arise. But after the 250 ends, they once again give rise to false thinking. During the second half, they will experience production. The reward of their samadhi of no thought is coming to an end. When the extinction ceases, they have a thought that slanders the triple jewel. When the production begins, marking the decline of their lifespan, when their samadhi is destroyed, they slander the triple jewel. What do they say? The Buddha said that a fourth stage ahad has ended birth and death and will not undergo any further becoming. Now I've already been certified to the fourth fruition, so why am I on my way to undergoing birth and death again? The Buddha must have told a lie. That's how they slander the triple jewel. Actually, they fought the Dhyana heaven. They are in is certainly not the fourth fruition of a hardship. It's not even at the level of the first fruition. They make the mistake of thinking that they have become fourth at fourth stage a hardship. Fourth stage a hardship. They get to the fourth dhyana and think it's the fourth stage of a hardship, but they are wrong. The unlearned Bishu made this mistake. Those who go this road are among those in the heaven of no thought. Sutra Ananda
those who float these four superior levels will be will not be moved by any suffering or bliss in any world. Although this is not the unconditioned or the true ground of non-moving, because they still have the thought of obtaining something, their functioning is nonetheless quite advanced. This is called the fourth dhyana. Commentary Ananda, those who follow these four superior levels will not be moved by any suffering or bliss in any world. Whether they experience suffering or bliss, their minds do not move. Although this is not the genuine unconditioned or the true ground of non-moving, they are still able to control their minds and keep them from moving. But it's a forced control. They have not been certified to the higher level, that is, because they still have the thought of obtaining something. In the fourth uh, dhyana, they still harbor the thought of having gained something. For instance, the unlearned Bishu thought he had reached the fourth fruition of Ahashi. Their functioning is nonetheless quite advanced. They have reached the maximum in their application of effort. Given the level they are on, this is called the fourth dhyana. These are the heavens of the fourth dhyana.